celebrating the release of her new CD, My Foolish Heart, it's a pleasure to welcome to Broadway Beat, Miss Nancy Lamont. And it's a pleasure to be here, Sydney. Thank you for joining us. Oh, thanks for inviting me. Nancy, your newest collection of songs mm -hmm. are standards, yeah. and your two previous CDs also featured many, mm -hmm. such as It Might As Well Be Spring, Come Rain or Come Shine, You Must Have Been a Beautiful Baby. Mm -hmm. Where do you think this affinity for the great American songbook stems from? Well, my father was a musician, and there were always Frank Sinatra records playing around our house, and Edie Gourmet was my mother's favorite, and um, my dad had a band. Who were your favorite singers growing up? Oh, well, I, I have to say I listened to a lot of Sinatra. I did a wonderful impression of Lena Horne when I was seven years old, um, singing Cole Porter. You can imagine, in Michigan, that was really a treat. Um, a Lena Horne impersonation. Mm -hmm. Oh, doing it long last love. I, you know, my parents used to really have a, a scream over that one. Is it an earthquake or merely a shock? <laughs> was it, is it the good turtle soup or merely the mock? <laughs> I see Lena there. <laughs> my father, who, you know, isn't necessarily... Uh, I wouldn't say that he's prejudiced because he grew up in Midland, Michigan. <laughs> he's lived there all his life. He doesn't know if he is or not. It's white Anglo-Saxon Protestant and that's all it is, you know. What was it like leaving Michigan? Oh, well, Michigan, Midland, Michigan is a very good place to start a trip. Um, <laughs> that was a rotten thing to say. No, it was just that it was time for me to go. In fact, there was this store. Uh, this big, f huge furniture and appliance store called Go Godwin's. And uh, it, they had this big neon sign on Saginaw Road. It said Godwin's. And then for a while it was Godden's. And then it was just God. I, if you were looking for God, he was on Saginaw Road. But the day that I left Midland, it said go. An omen. Yes. And you did. I did. I went to San Francisco. And what did you find? Cabaret. How long were you in San Francisco? Four years. And then I got an offer to go to Provincetown to work. And I thought, well, you know, gee, I'm practically in New York. And in San Francisco, everybody talked about going to New York, but nobody ever really did it. And I thought, well, I could take all the money that I've made this summer, and I could go back to San Francisco and try to get my furniture across country, but I knew I wouldn't make it. So I went to New York, and I borrowed lawn chairs that in this little studio apartment that I had. And, and uh, I was miserable for an entire year until I met Irv Rabel and met everybody in Cabaret in New York. It was, it was great. I was, I was at the White House last night. Tell us. Yeah, I sang with the President and Mrs. Clinton last night at the White House. How did that happen? Uh, serendipity, <laughs> dumb luck, I don't know. Uh, they wanted some entertainment for uh, uh, dinner for the uh, Democratic chairman, the, the fundraisers for the Democratic Party. And they called Roger McFarland at Broadway Cares Equity Fights AIDS for suggestions. And they suggested me. Scott Barnes is my manager. He called me up and he said, are you available to sing at the White House tomorrow night? Just like that. And I said, the White House? He said, yeah, the, the White House. Bill Clinton's White House? Yeah. Uh-huh, yeah, sure. You also have some wonderful new news, mm -hmm. thanks to New York Magazine. Yes, New York Magazine has chosen me their Cabaret Singer of the Year, which is just so... Thank you, thank you. <laughs> what a compliment. Yeah, it really is. That's, that's just... I don't even know what to say. I'm stunned. Mm, it's great. You're really rare because most people who come to national prominence either have a career on Broadway or television or films, mm -hmm. but for someone who really was based in New York in yeah. clubs mm -hmm. and not singing necessarily new material, singing the Great American Songbook, that you've shot to this popularity is really an achievement. Uh, yeah, well, I always wanted to be a saloon singer. I, I auditioned for Broadway occasionally, and the truth is that I really wanted to concentrate on the singing. I wanted to make records. And so I concentrate on making the best records that I can make. And, you know, you just take that one thing and, and go to town with it as much as you can. 
And that's what I've decided to do. And I'm getting somewhere with it. And I think it also goes back to that thing about romance. You know, people really want some romance in their lives right now. And the old songs, it's all there. It's all there, you know. It's, some of the songs, like uh, a song like I'm Glad There Is You, probably means more in the 90s than it did in the 40s when it was written. You know, in this world of ordinary people, extraordinary people, I'm glad there is you. In this world of overrated pleasures and underrated treasures. I mean, that fits this era so much. People are, are what we should treasure. You know, anyway, that's how I feel about it. Travel far together. We'll pursue our little star together. We'll be happy as we are together. We may never get to heaven, but it's heaven at least to try. Watch the evening.